in a little bit of a different format. We're in a little bit of a different format tonight. We're trying to adjust back to our um, pre-COVID uh, meeting uh, timing and format. Typically, our work uh, shop before a regular meeting would take place upstairs in the superintendent's conference room. But since we want we don't necessarily have the technolo technological capabilities up there at this time to be able to Zoom our um, workshop meetings from there. So we figured we would just do it down here for ease of access from those of, for those of us joining from home. Um, so let's just jump right in. Um, uh, no Hold president. On. It says there's no sound. No president's report from. You mean the people at home can't hear us? Anymore? Somebody said they can't hear us. Yeah, Marianne, can you hear us? I can hear you. All right. Um, all right, go ahead. Um, uh, and I'll have no presence report during workshop tonight. Anything to you, Dr. Thank you. No, I'm going to defer to the uh, regular meeting as well. All right, thank you. Uh, Ken, superintendent, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, presentation of minutes, Mr. Weinstein. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Madam President. Uh, move to approve the meeting minutes in accordance with Board of Education bylaws number 0168, uh, recording of board meetings um, for July 6, 2021. Can I get a second? Actually, well, for I here, this is just going to be discussion. We'll move it in the regular meeting. We should say discussion where you are. Sure. Maybe you're in the regular meeting agenda, not the first copy. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the same, only for discussion. Okay. So any uh, questions, comments, revisions on those? Um, I just had a, 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 I guess, an observation. The We spent like 45 minutes talking about, uh, you know, opening up um, the meetings to the public and us attending and all that. And it was only like, it's, it's like only a sentence. Do we, do we want to put more in the minutes? Are we allowed to put a little bit more description in the minutes about what that discussion was about? Um, or, I mean, I realize we're generally pretty, I don't want to say vague, but pretty short just so the minutes stay short, but I just felt that was a pretty lengthy and uh, active discussion that might warrant a little bit more in the actual minutes. I, I think in the past, it's been, it's always a summary, uh, and because especially now, which we're, you know, recording the meetings and. So if anyone wants to see the meetings or hear the discussion, they can certainly log on and do that. Uh, so, you know, we don't, I mean, I could certainly do a little bit more, but point? it's just, uh, in yeah, essence, it's supposed to just capture that this is what was discussed, not as much breaking down every little detail of it. Um, but I, I mean, going forward, I can try to do a little bit more for, for my, well, I think the commitment there, Ken. Don't tie anybody down to an expectation. I mean, I think the, I think the challenge is that, um, you know, you probably just want to keep stating the facts, right? Yeah, and then once you go, once you dive in, how much how much do you dive yeah, in? It's a challenge. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the law says that really only action items need to be, you know, uh, laid out in, in the minutes. Uh, so, you know, uh, so discussion. I'm sorry, I don't mean yeah. to interrupt. So if we were to bring that up again and something that was on the agenda and say we were to talk about it for an hour, it would probably, you know, have a lengthier. If it was, a, if if it was, was an action item, item okay. then right. it, it would be, yes. I try to do more when it's something that's being voted on. Right. When it's just it's general right. discussion, just try to capture what was discussed. And then knowing that there's a, uh, I mean, there's always been a, an audio tape of, of the meeting. Now there's uh, a Zoom. Uh, tape or video of it also. I'm cool with that. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. Um, Ms. Tortorello, Financial Management and Resource Services. Discussion items there. Okay. So I read them now, but not later. Correct. So we have eight items for eight items for discussion this evening. 7.1. Uh, Board of Education and Administration will discuss the acceptance of the 2021-2022 New Jersey Non-Public School Security Aid Program allocations for the district, totally $187,075. Each non-public school allocation is listed below. 
7.2, use of facilities. Board of Ed and Administration will discuss the use of facilities as per the attached memo dated July 20th, 2021. 7.3, Delta T Group. Board of Ed and Administration will discuss Delta T Group, a referral agency to find and contract aid services for the school district for the period of July 6, 21 through August 12, 21 at a rate of $21 per hour on an as needed basis in accordance with the attached agreement. 7.4, acceptance of non-public textbook aid allocations. Board of Ed and Administration will discuss the acceptance of the 2021-2022 New Jersey non-public school textbook aid program allocations for the district, totaling $58,219. Each non-public school allocation is listed below. 7.4, uh, acceptance of non-public technology aid allocations. Board of Ed and Administration will discuss the acceptance of the 21-22 New Jersey non-public school technology aid program allocations for the district, totaling $40,740. Each non-public school allocation is listed below. 7.6, acceptance of non-public nursing aid allocations. Board of Ed Administration will discuss the acceptance of the 21-22 New Jersey non-public school nursing service aid program allocations for the district, totaling $119,728. Each non-public school allocation is listed below. 7.7, .7, ESEA fiscal year 2022 grant allocations. Board of Ed and Administration will discuss the acceptance of funds under the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, uh, ESEA, grant application fiscal year 2022, which covers school year 21-22. This notification is required under ESEA, ESSA compliance regulations. Salary and staff information will be forthcoming. And 7.8, paving, uh, paving at the high school and bus yard. Board of Ed and Administration will discuss paving projects for the high school and bus yard by Garden State Ceiling Inc. under contract ESCNJ 1819-66 for a total cost of $67,250.64 for the 21-22 school year in accordance with the attached proposal. Mr. Dadaroff. Okay, uh, let's see, the non-publics, and we've talked about this before, these are basically flow through monies that are, that are given to us from the state. They go to the non-public uh, 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 schools that are in our geographic uh, location of Ocean Township. So that's those, and they're for the different areas, non-public nursing, uh, so it's nursing services, Textbook services, technology services, uh, security services, and did I miss one? Uh, but that's, you know, that's the purpose of the funds and, and those are the allocations uh, to each of the non-public schools. Uh, let's see what else. I have a question on 7.8 if you want me. Okay, and, and the only other thing before I take questions, I just want to point out the, uh, uh, seven, right, 7.8, I don't know if this is your question, but the this is just for the student parking lot and the bus uh, uh, the bus yard. It's not the front, it's not the entire parking lot. That would be much more money, but that's where the, the, the worst parts mm -hmm. of, of the parking lot are. So we're looking, you know, this is something we budgeted, if you remember. And uh, so this is something that we're you know, going to correct. And we're just the sealing. Summer. We're just sealing it. We're not. No, it's mill and pave. Oh, it is mill yes. and pave. Yes, mill and pave. Okay. Yes. Obviously, new lines. Correct. New lines. Yeah. I mean, we pretty much do new lines all the time. Uh, although last summer we didn't do a lot. <laughs> do we? Um, is there a reason why in this bid we didn't do the wayside parking lot in the same bid? Yes, we were. It's a different. It's not asphalt. We're we're going with a different solution. Okay. And it's been a little bit more difficult, but much more cost effective. Okay. So and environmentally friendly. Yes, and environmentally friendly. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's. So is that going to be done before the school year? Probably not. Okay. No, but I'm hoping to get it done before. Back to school night. Back to school night. <laughs> what are the dates? Huh? Probably like three days after the school. Okay, then probably not back to school <laughs> night either. Yeah. It'll probably it will be in September, latest early October. Okay. So by the carnival in October? <laughs> when is, what date is it? Usually like the second weekend? Yes, we will definitely try to, to do that. We will definitely try. 
<laughs> There's a commitment to buy try. back to school Definitely night probably. and 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 uh, carnival for 2023. Right. Have a Halloween. <laughs> Have a Halloween. When How about start? October 1st? Yeah. I can say definitely for uh, no, well, November 1st. For Halloween. I wasn't going to I wasn't going to go there. Right. But for Halloween. When you yes. say environmentally friendly, what do you is it the honeycomb design? Yes. Exactly. So you're getting that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Are we possibly doing a press release on that? Because well, I will because I've been harping on this forever. <laughs> because yes. that is a that's I like know. the wave of the future, and right. we're the only are we the only ones in Monmouth maybe that are doing uh, something like that um, at schools. I, I mean, so. we it's that's a solution we've used and yeah. a lot of people use for, but mostly for fire roads. Right. Sometimes yeah. you don't even you Not don't even really know it's there. Yeah, because right. grass can come up through it. Mm -hmm. it it's an impervious surface, and that's one of the good parts right. of it. Uh, so, but, yeah. and parents will see it and be like, "What? I thought we got this paid." You know, it might be good to explain. Yeah, we'll do yeah. that. Once, yeah. We, once we get closer to doing it, yeah, yeah that's a good idea. That we, we can we explain it. And yeah. that maybe done. Denise play can send something out or whatever. Let everybody know. But yeah. It will be great well, we for overflow parking there. Yeah, get that parking lot. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. What does JDSA mean? I apologize. In the school facilities uh application it just says jdsa uh, basketball so game cbs right here the jewish school uh yeah let me oh, see I what it stands it. for and I'm, JDSA, uh, I it and I'm assuming it doesn't conflict with the rex use of otes during those days uh it shouldn't no, they signed off on it and approved it uh jdsa i'm not sure it stands for. Isn't that one of the Sephardic Association? Yeah, I, I think one it's. CBS, I yeah, it yes, it's definitely who it is. I'm not sure what it yeah, stands I think it's for. It's one of the Sephardic Kind of like BSN, or, or I think they're, I don't Are know if sure? they're yeah, okay. one of them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Questions for financial management? Thank you, Mr. Torello. Uh, instruction, education, student activities, Ms. Gilman. Uh, yes, there are six items for discussion. We begin with curriculum writing. Board of Education and Administration will discuss a curriculum writing request to be completed before August 31st, 2021, in accordance with the attached memorandum dated July 15th, 2021. 8.2. Board of Education and Administration will discuss the cancellation of a one-to-one -one aid out of district placement for the 2021 summer ESY program in accordance with the attached memorandum dated July 19th, 2021. 8.3, early field placement. Board of Education and Administration will discuss the request of college students to fulfill their early field practice requirements in accordance with the attached memorandum dated July 15th, 2021. 8.4, the out-of-school suspension report for June. Board of Education and Administration will discuss the district's out-of-school suspension report for the month of June 2021. 8.5, evaluation instruments. Board of Education and Administration will discuss evaluation instruments for professional staff for the 2021-2022 school year. New Jersey Principal Evaluation for Professional Learning, NJ. PEPL for supervisors, directors, assistant principals, and principals district developed evaluation instrument based on the Charlotte Danielson model for professional staff. 8.6, professional development for staff, Board of Education and Administration will discuss the attached memorandum dated July 15th, 2021, RE staff professional development activities in accordance with district policy 6471 and NJAC 6A colon 23A-7. The attendance at said activities is fiscally prudent and will promote the delivery of instruction and or will further the efficient operation of the district. Reimbursement for travel and related expenses shall be according to the Department of the Treasury guidelines and NJOMB circular 06-02 and A-87. Dr. Only two things, unless there are any questions um, uh, that I would just want to mention. 8.4, just to note to the public that that discussion took place in executive session, so uh, as it involves particular students. 
So that discussion, even though it's listed under here in instruction, we do have that conversation in the executive session. 8.5, uh, that is a yearly approval. So nothing has changed here. It's the documents, it's the evaluation instruments we've been using now for a number of years. It's just required to be uh, approved uh, each year. And so that's what, uh, that's what this approval is, is for. Well, my question is about the Charlotte Danielson model, which mm -hmm. we have been using for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Have we explored any um, mm -hmm. other models? And uh, I, I remember being evaluated myself as a, a former teacher with that model and uh, wasn't really crazy about, about many aspects of it. I know that we have changed it and adapted it and yeah, modified it right, for we've, our we've own. modified it a little bit. Um, uh, not recently. Not that recently. we've looked at anything recently. Um, the NJ uh, people, um, the, the one for administrators, that that is relatively new. That's probably about three years old. We did use a, a previous model prior to that, but uh, no. And and nor there has you know there hasn't been a. I mean, the overwhelming majority of our folks tend to do pretty well in the Dar the Danielson model. So I don't I don't think that there's been certainly there hasn't been a call from from the staff to, to look at a different model. We did so. talk about it in um, instructional council many years ago. Like, yeah. like probably, I don't know if that was when the year you and I were on Irene or the year before where, and they had looked at other models and they thought that that was the best model to go with. Well, I was wondering if other districts, you know, surrounding districts use the Danielson model or if they use something. Many do. The major, uh, the, the, I mean, I haven't seen statistics probably in a couple of years just because we've, you know, has people have been focused on other things right, in the last right. year and a half, but um, it's my understanding that the Danielson model is the most widely used model. There are a few others. There's there's um, uh, the strong. There's um, uh, what's the um, there's Marzano. Marzano is the other Marshall, one. Right? And yeah. Marshall was the was the administrator one that we used. And um, Mid Continent. Yeah, but um, no, we haven't. I mean, you know, we haven't investigated a new model probably in a while. You know, so okay. you know, yeah. I mean, we certainly can. Uh, Who would break. look into that? Well, that would probably be something that would go through instructional, instructional council. council. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I can speak to Mr. Riley to see if there's a if there's you know a desire on the part of them. But you know, it it, it probably is a good time to <clears throat> during this school year. You know, maybe just take a look and see if this is something that still meets our needs. I will tell you that in looking, you know, go having gone through this process years ago. In looking at the different models that existed, there was no one model that everybody loved. You know what I mean? There was not every model, you know, really captures everything and the true essence of everything that goes on in a classroom. Um, so you, you know, so that's why I think the district here did make some modifications to the Danielson model to perhaps better better capture what goes on and, and um, but no model is perfect no model is, is perfect but overall i think our folks have seemed relatively relatively happy with it but we can certainly take are this you, take are this you also assuming that they haven't looked at other models Who's that? in a while or has it i don't believe i mean yeah. since, since yeah. i've been sure I, I i can say that we haven't really given okay. strong consideration to other models how many evaluations are done each year oh god I mean, not Hundreds. like in total, um, I'm just talking for each person. Yeah, uh, for non-tenured person, it's a minimum of two. Okay. These are all minimums, minimum of two, plus a summative evaluation. So it's two classroom evaluations plus a summative evaluation. Okay. And for a non-tenured individual, it's a minimum of three plus a summative evaluation. And we say minimums because sometimes there are, are times where we would see someone more, but it, it it's not typical, yeah, but it does happen from time to time that someone could be seen. Yeah, Jim, 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 how much is it for yeah. tenured? Oh, I'm sorry, for tenured. For tenured, it's two. It's two. Yeah. It's two. Okay. For non-tenured, it's three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It used to be one for tenured staff members years ago. When the law changed about 10 years ago, then it went to two. But. And do we have to buy this, or is this something yeah. that should the instructional, they just say, oh, we're going to use it this year? We, we do purchase a, um, an electronic uh, web-based uh, system to, to log everything. So we don't pop, we don't purchase the model, but we purchase the uh, the web based uh, platform by which to record everything and, and uh, you know 
like we do with lesson plans, like we do with a lot of different things, uh, you know, quiz, this project, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's not um, specific to this model. It could be no, two different no, models. we make that company takes the model and they put it into into the into their platform. And it's just a you know, it's just provides for an electronic uh, uh, means by which to complete the evaluations, which is you know saves a lot of time and energy and type of thing. Okay. If there's any other questions on the other items, the others seem to be pretty straightforward, unless there's questions. Anything? All right, hearing none. Uh, thank you, Ms. Gilman. Uh, personnel was taken care of upstairs. Uh, policy, Mr. Weinstein. Yep. Okay, um, Board of Education Administration will discuss the second final reading of revised or new policies and regulations as follows. So these are policies that we had a first, we had actually a zero reading of through a level where we, the policy <laughs> committee read them and then we had a discussion with Ken and Jim. And, um, and then we uh, gave these to everybody, I think was the, somewhere around the 5th or so, is that right? Somewhere before the meeting and said you had a couple of weeks to look at it. And then we had some comments. I think Alex uh, gave some comments to me that I've kind of passed along to everybody else. And, um, and so I think uh, there's a few ones that kind of came up. I think for the lion's share of these, it was, uh, there were no comments and everybody <laughs> should kind of be okay with it. But, and I think uh, Alex made some comments about policies that we might want to figure out how they're could be available on the website and, and whether those should be in the regulations and uh, and whether they should be inside the policy about how frequently they're looked at or how often they're put on the website and those kind of things right so i did talk to jim briefly about it and jim thought he better he, he jim and ken thought it better be to discuss this here as opposed to write something up right is that a fair assessment yeah just make okay. a more discussion of it Okay. So, um, so if we want to go through the specific points. Sure, I think we would. If, we, if, uh, if someone could remind me of the specific points, okay. that would be great. All right. I guess I could do that. Because I don't have my email up in front of me, so right. I apologize. Okay. Frequency of updating? Frequency of updating. Well, I think the frequency of, well, the frequency of updating, well, it wasn't, that wasn't one of the points, because the okay. frequency yeah. of updating, we were going to make sure we document and put it on there. It was more that that the um, uh, well, that well, inside was... that inside the policy and regulation there would be more date driven about when certain events would happen inside the policy, right? Uh, how often people might be reviewed, or how often things would be discussed, or how often people would be notified of these kind of things. And we didn't think that those were things that should be inside the policy. Is that no? It would typically, not be something inside the right. policy. I mean, it's, I mean, I remember from the last board meeting there was discussion. I think specifically about code of conduct. And in terms of you know where that would be or how that would be presented, mm -hmm. I mean you know I mean uh, we, obviously all the policies are on the website you know with with some with some clicking. Um, every code of conduct is put inside student handbooks and is on the website. All the student handbooks are on each school's website, um, and a parent has to sign off on code of conduct. And, you know now do they read every word? No, probably not. Uh, but we certainly wished for them too. I don't know if putting it on the website will entice them to read every word either. You know what I mean? But we certainly can take the full policy if there's a, if there's a feeling like we need to, I mean, there are certain policies, well, like for example, use of facilities. We, let's let's yeah, just nail it down so we don't sure, have to. Sure. So on, uh, on, this, on the reporting of student progress, uh, Alex's comment, when does this take effect and will parents um, get reports physically emailed to them, UPS mailed to them? How does that get, how does that get done? Well, that, right. we, we don't, we know, we do primarily electronic, uh, you know, reporting parents who have access to PowerSchool have constant, um, you know, ability to, to check. We, we do only do uh, uh, paper report cards for those parents who request it. So if you request if you request a paper report card, we will we will mail it to you. Other than that, it's it's on PowerSchool that every parent has access to. Well, you get the end of the year one mailed. So except at elementary. The end of the year one for all students gets mailed. They send them home. Yeah, at the end. So those. Oh, progress. And elementary schools get paper. 
every everyone. I thought they only got. You get them at conferences. I've never gotten like, a power school grade. We get the paper ones. Elementary. elementary. It's been a long time since my kids. <laughs> I get power school grades for elementary. I get paper too, but I get power school. Yeah, I mean power school. It's available certainly yeah. for everyone. But no, but nobody at Dow for like nobody uses power school except for the fourth grade when they're starting to give number grades, and it, and the parents don't check it for a test, for example. That was my experience at one yeah. Massa too. That, that yeah. it was that in elementary that you. Well, I think yeah. I think elementary takes a little bit of a different approach right, where it's right. more of it's more of a holistic. Because you have and you also have conferences in elementary yeah, where you yeah. don't have them starting fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So like power school for me, I didn't check till fifth grade right, and then exactly. as you got older as they get older you know i'm on it every day you know i, I have the <laughs> notifications come up every day and your kids appreciate it they do but but the thing about but but to that point yeah. and we've talked about this before is that sometimes the outreach to parents i don't know that there's a fine line of when the outreach to parents should happen when a kid is falling behind well, well that, that, well, that outreach, I mean, that the first thing that should always happen if a student is struggling is, is that teacher to parent outreach immediately. Which like doesn't that, always happen. A parent happen. should never have to wait for a report card for, you know, to get notification that your child is struggling. So, you know, that the first line is always going to be. The, I'm not the, saying it should be in policy. I think that that's a different. Yeah, I think this right, is a different conversation it, it, it that can be talked yeah. about. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think, think that's yeah, a different. I think, I think yeah. the scope needs to be about what should be in the policy. Right. 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 And I think some of the ones I was talking about were, were merely like, uh, within ten days, the parent will get a letter of blah blah blah. Within three days, the follow up email from the principal. Whereas we might say in the policy currently, the principal will send a follow up to the parent, like what's the harm in assigning an accountable date well we, usually in policy we, we we don't really try unless it's prescribed by law to do so because it's just you know you're, you're really depending on what it is depending on what's going on it, it may be difficult to meet some of those some of those timelines um and more that would that would typically fall under either a regulation if a policy has a regulation or just you know part of administrative um you know how how it's done administratively so i i would, I would probably have to understand more like a specific example as to what you're referring to 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 see whether it is something that is um, uh, i think it was something like on the reporting student progress I'm, yes that, that's what i'm kind of making it up like at the end it says you know if your student is struggling we will let you know i'm okay. paraphrasing mm -hmm. you know why can't it say uh, we will let you know by doing X, Y, Z within a certain amount of time and, you know, we will follow up with you within X, Y, Z time. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know if that's really best for in policy language. Um, it's more procedural. Yeah, because exactly. It's, it's, it's more, of, you know, carrying out. I mean, I, I you know. I, I don't know that I would typically, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with the practice of what you're saying. I just don't know if that's language that would necessarily be contained in the policy. You know, I, I don't want, I don't want our, I don't want to have that happen because it's in policy. I want that to happen because that's just good practice and that's what should be doing. To someone's point though, it could be, well, if it's, it's not, not happening, yeah. then, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Does that get added to the notes? In power school quarterly, it does what? Uh, it does what? Yeah. What you're talking about, like um, if a student is struggling, because it, it does if they're doing very well. So you mean with like progress? Yeah, progress, progress, progress yeah I've well. seen. I've no, so I've definitely seen uh, comments made that that would. That so it would definitely happens. It. Quarterly, but I, but we would but, we always encourage um, if there if there we do not want a, 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 to rely on a person checking comments in power school if their child is struggling. We would always want a direct uh, contact mm -hmm. from the teacher to, to the parent. That is something we stress over and over and over again. Uh, I, you know, and, but every year we do hear that sometimes that doesn't always happen mm -hmm. in the best way. So, you know, obviously if, if someone, for example, we, it should never be a surprise when, when a parent goes on and checks power school, unless there was just say a test given and, test which knocked down an average um, a parent should never be surprised 
by a poor grade, poor report card grade or something like that, right? You should never be surprised by that. There should always be outreach. And I can, I can say that, you know, I, I've, I would hope to think just as a parent, not because of who I am, um, that I've gotten, I've gotten those. Not that my child ever does poorly, but um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's happened now, you know, but at the same time, we have had situations where, um, you know, a, a report card grade comes and it's lower. And, and a lot of times that's due to, and that's typically more so at the middle and high school level, because sometimes assignments are, are um, not graded until the very close <laughs> to the end of a marking period. Right. And so a student's doing fine, a student's doing fine, a student's doing fine, a bunch of grades come in mm -hmm. and which by the way, isn't necessarily great either. And, and it drops a kid down, you know, and a student doesn't have a lot of time to mm -hmm. react or make or, or do anything about it, you know? So those are all mm -hmm. issues, but those are things that would typically be right. dealt with, you know, administratively. I, I think the, I think probably the thing is that the, the policy, so there's regulations, which is things we need to do. Policies are kind of like our intent on how we plan. Yeah, it's more broad. Right? It's more broad. And then what I think we're trying to say to ourselves is, um, and this might be uncomfortable to some or comfortable to others or whatever, but it's really about the implementation we want to leave to the staff. But saying that, I guess if we thought that there were some policies that we that we believed we really were not living up to the intent, then I would say that we should then take those policies and figure out how to take them up. So, and we're having some, so if we're not, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily for this right now, but it, cause it doesn't seem like there's this policy that people are saying, oh my God, we're not really informing people. We're not really communicating, right? But if we thought that there was something like that, yeah, I mean, then we should say to ourselves, okay, we should fix it somehow by tightening up the intent. Mm -hmm. Right. Clarify I mean, typically, right. Like it's a, a, typically a policy would say, the, the, the school district will report student progress on a regular basis, quarterly basis, whatever it is. That would typically be the, the policy. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, whether it's in regulation or in a handbook, okay, we do quarterly report cards and this is the deal. And if there's a struggle, if a student is struggling, you know, that's how, that's where we would spell it out, right? right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I guess without being absent, without knowing uh, everything that's going on in every aspect of the school, mm -hmm. The policies here, I don't think anybody is saying to themselves, oh my God, something's out of whack. We need to really tighten something up. Is that, right. is that a fair assessment by everybody or is that? Yes. I mean, I think yes. my, my take on it is just there are isolated situations where from time to time, Correct. a right. parent may not. But right. it's not something that's. Uh, Which a policy might not even have fixed that per se. Yeah, no. It's certainly think, not right. living up right. to the expectations. Correct. That and and what we would always say in that instance is, you know, a parent, if that occurred, a parent should reach out to a principal or supervisor and that's something that we could address if, if they felt like they did not get right. the proper notification of student progress. But I guess, I guess if I were, if what would be a, appreciative is that when we start going through all the other policies, if there were things that when you put your lens on it and you said, you know what, really, should, I know, you know, you, 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 then you might be reluctant to do that. But if there's something in there that says, you know what, if I was giving us a grade on this policy, how we were administering, I'd give us a, a C plus, and we really should make it a B plus, and here's how we should tighten it up. Because I don't know if we, it would be on us to be able to use anecdotal information to know how much we need to tighten something up. That yeah, I mean, this is, this is, say, right, I'd, I'd, I'd this is one more. that I would look at and say that okay. it's, a, it's a major problem in terms of people not getting okay. regular notification, but uh, is know, everybody more okay? of a universal or global problem, I think it could, there could be isolated situations. Is everybody okay looking at the policies kind of like in that light? Yes. Sure. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alex? Yep. I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well. Um, there was one specifically one, though, that I guess I want to point out in uh, uh, the expectations for student conduct. Mm -hmm. Is there a is there an update that we actually put that out there and make that known? Is it something that goes with it? Yeah, like I said, it goes home at the beginning of every, every school year. year. Okay. Every school year that a parent signs off on, right? I mean, whether they read it or not, we can't control that. But, but isn't it really thick? We don't send the whole policy home. It's like this. In well, in, in the in the student, it, well, no, not the entire the policy, but typically, big. typically yeah. the the behaviors and the consequences for those behaviors. There's typically like a grid okay. that speaks to what a student. If you do this, then this is what will happen. That's typically what's in in the handbook. In the on the elementary handbook, that was actually yeah, because that was an issue that arose I think two years ago that 
that was added to the elementary handbook, I think last year. And, uh, and obviously the elementary handbook is a little bit different than the middle and high school because you know how, how, how behaviors are addressed at the elementary level is, is, is different. Uh, I also are. think, um, and again, this is from when Mrs. Hagerman and at the time Mr. Lambusta came here right. to talk when we were talking about code of conduct yep. and everything. I remember, and I think Mrs. Hagerman's on so she can correct me if I'm wrong, that when the, in, when the new incoming freshman class comes in, at the very least, when this happens, yeah, they right. sign a contract that right. goes over like the, a lot of the policies, like the, you know, the alcohol and drugs policy and a lot right. of those ones that hit and, mm -hmm. and they sign that themselves yeah. and that goes over and, the demerit amount and stuff like that. So that's where the procedure, the yeah, they do a meeting they right. and they sign a contract yeah. and then that's like when, so when the demerit start, how, cause we were asking like, how is how, what basically, and that when Chris came to the middle school, or Mr. Amato, sorry, I'm using first names, but anyway, when they came to the middle school, they were trying to merge a little bit more of the, a little bit of the um, discipline style and the, and the expectations for students so that oh, it was right. more of a, um, oh, nice so it was consistent. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I mean. So a um, copy of the demerit system is on? I've never website? seen that. It's in the, I know it's in the student handbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a, and, I mean, I'm a fifth grade parent. I've, I don't think there's no demerit. demerit from what I know, I don't um, think no, there's no demerit. It's more of a high school. school. Demerit is more of a high school. school. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure my yeah. high school. son would be a punk school. when he wants to be. Yeah. It would be nice to <laughs> Well, there's a section in the handbook well, specifically for your son. It's like a thing to know. Like, if this is the behavior, this is the consequence. Yeah, it's in the handbook. It's all right. We've read it. Yeah, it is. Online. Every handbook is online. Every handbook. You have to go to I, the I school. To the school we have all signed up. We've read them. So yes. I, 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 can, I can pull out your. I can pull out your signed things that say you read them. So. I've read so many yeah, well, policies, I mean, but this one I wanted. You know, as a, as a parent who's, who yes. signs them too, I mean, every school. I doubt that everybody reads it word for word. Yeah. You know, but the one thing we could say about code of conduct, for the most part, is that you know, students. Students know what bad behavior is. They know what, what poor behavior is. Um, they know that smoking in the bathroom is not something they're allowed to do. They know that fighting is not something they're allowed to do. They know that X is, you know, they know this. They unfortunately, that doesn't always mean that that's going to be enough to prevent those things from always happening, right? Um, but what is important is that they know what the behaviors are and that they know what the expect. One, they know what the expectations are. Two, that if they do make a poor decision and, and something happens, because we all know a lot of times what that a lot of the um, negative behaviors that occur are emotional spur of the moment kinds of things. They're not necessarily thought out plans. Some are, but for the most part, it's, you know, hey, you know, you took my cupcake, you know, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. And then, you know, the next thing you know, right? And that is often how a lot of these things happen, particularly at the at the higher grade level. So I don't know, certainly that there's this feeling that, that kids don't know what is expected of them. At the end of the day, they're their kids and they will still make mistakes and they they will make poor choices sometimes and in the hopes that they don't get caught and sometimes they won't get caught but a lot of times they do get caught so you know uh but certainly if there's a feeling if there's a consensus that we should take the, the code of conduct like the code of conduct and pull it out even more so from the student handbooks and have it on each school's website you know yeah, i wouldn't put it on the i wouldn't put it on the main page but the <clears throat> school websites you know well, i would yeah, I, would sure. suggest, I would suggest yeah. just to ground yourself i was just you look at it mm -hmm. and you tell us you tell us if you think it's getting it done and then we'll kind of start from there is that yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as far as um, 11 goes, I think we, not 11, 10. I think, Madam President, we, we're good. Uh, I think we're good. I think we're exhausted. This. All right. And thank you and everyone who has worked on these policies for all of the work that you have done and will continue to do through this process. It is appreciated. My pleasure. <laughs> I feel the sincerity. I love exactly. it. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone. 11.1 uh, .1 discussion, uh, notice of open public meetings. Uh, Mr. Jenner, and I'll turn this over to you. Just to yeah, this is just a, an update to the, the notice, the, the required public notice, as we uh, discussed last meeting and changing of the times uh, for uh, the, the future meetings from you know, August through the end of the year until the new uh, schedule is made. 
uh, after the election and uh, you know uh, in January uh, <coughs> December January where, where a new schedule will be made for the 2022 year wow mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. all right thank you so I don't know if there are any questions but this goes you know part of the transitioning back as far as adjusting the times so this is the the notice that it legally needs to be sent out so the workshop meetings will be will be held down here just as right. so tonight. okay yeah thank you um right so the workshop meetings will be here and we are in the process of of updating you know the mic the microphones for not only as as we know these these microphones uh here are not for amplification in this room but they are for the the members of the public or anyone who's on online so that's where we have to make sure we still speak mm -hmm. into them or have them close enough that so that people everyone uh, can hear us online but with the new microphones it will also amplify through the speakers mm -hmm. here so when we eventually have more uh public here uh, besides Mr. Alto, uh <laughs> it's good to see you by the way <laughs> uh so then it'll do it'll do both so that's a, a, an upgrade that we're uh, michael and his team are, are are working on now will they be microphones or lavalier mics do you know that we can wear well, they they're well. they'll be microphones on okay. the stands in case we want to detach them and sing a song or something like that <laughs> and, and they're well, also want <laughs> we'll, we'll also be adding another camera uh, another angle so we can do a picture in picture and we're moving the screen over to there so as we get back to presentations and things of that nature so there'll be so online you'll be able to have someone at the step and repeat uh in the, the where the public oh, look at that the tarp. The tarp. where you'll be able to speak there or if there's a, a budget presentation or whatever yeah. the presentation is for the screen and the projector will be moved so that that camera will pick it up and we'll have so you'll also still have the angle that you see now for the full board, but also uh, a close up of or closer up of the, the step and repeat, whoever speaking in any presentations that'll happen. So that's what we're working on. Is, um, and, and painting is coming soon too. Right. If somebody showed up um, and needed the lift, I've always wondered this because I've never seen it. <laughs> do we have a key? Do we? Yes. Does somebody yeah. in this room at all times know where? If you're yes. not here, the, cust the custodian who's on duty right now. There's somebody in this building. Yes, there's someone yeah. in this building oh. that can operate the lift. Yeah. Okay. Somebody has to stay yeah. until we finish. And oh, okay. Yes. That's good to know. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And that's that's it. I think for that. All right. Thank you. Uh, any old business from the board? I had one item. Um, there's been discussion in the past of whether or not we were going to be able to have in person visits to say the intermediate school. This is typically the fourth graders would have gone over, but that yeah. didn't happen obviously because of COVID. Are there any updates to those types of for folks going to new kids going to new schools? Well, I just so happened to discuss that with Mr. Amato this morning. This is not a setup, actually. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, not so there's so so the plan is right now to like the ninth grade orientation, which is held on the first day of uh, staff reporting in September. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking to do that for fifth grade as well. So uh, basically a fifth grade orientation. Now the sixth, the, the rising, a couple of years ago, we added a rising sixth mm -hmm. grade because yeah. there was a difference. And this, the fifth graders were able to go over and they had sixth graders come over and talk to the fifth graders yep. and they were able to do a lot of that. Not so much with the parents, which we've done, but we did do, I, I think they, they still continue the video thing. But for the rising fifth grade, they are looking, Mr. Amato is looking to uh, have a program on the September 1st, where they would uh, invite the fifth grade in, we would provide buses for the kids who oh, needed right. it, and, and bring them and you know, run through a little program and, and what have you, and you know, meet their teachers, work their lockers, get through, go through a lot of the things that cause right. the kids the anxiety of going to fifth grade for those who, who feel that. Is That's there a great. sense of the timing of the day for that yet? Um, that that out soon? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what time of day. Okay. Um, typically, the I'm trying to think of just how the ninth grade program would typically run. I think they bring them in like mid morning and it goes till like early afternoon, like a 10 to 1 thing or something like that, 10 to noon, something like that. Can I but, make a suggestion? Of course. That 
that goes out soon about if you need a bus because you know transportation is going to start getting very busy with the first day of school bus notes going yeah. out so if you add that to transportation yeah and even yeah. <laughs> I'm just uh, saying summer it might be vacations people yeah might not well right i mean there may be and that may that be you know coming. um i mean normally i mean i don't know that we won't return to an end of year thing like we've done in the past i found it you know in many ways that makes more sense mm -hmm. right. uh just this year because of you know everything that went right. optional. Right. yeah it's not required right. i mean i know some people might like to do it i mean this year we the kids don't come back till the night so people may have taken later later vacations you know right. so it's very and I, I would say though you know look if, if if anyone falls into that category and can't attend i think if you contact the school they would work to make an accommodation for you you know i mean uh I, you know i know they've done it in the past and i think He's they there. would continue to do it again you know? is this oh go ahead and i just wanted to september 1st is the firm date it's just the time that has not been I'm, decided. I'm, I, well, from my conversation today, it looked like Mr. Amato was looking at the first. I, I don't want to go as far as to say it is an absolute 100% firm date. It would either be the first or the second. Okay. Those are the only two options. So I think uh, it is more likely the first. But okay. but I will I will tell him tomorrow. He's, He's probably he not listening. Uh, Mr. Motto, can we get that out as confirm that up and get that out as soon as possible? Even if it's just to save the date right. and the yeah. time right. is still save being worked out. Right. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, we can do it. Is this the thing that I heard there were fifth graders from this year that were kind of selected to be tour guides for incoming fourth graders? Awesome. Um, I'm not sure. Is this I'm not what sure. it is? I'm not sure. It, if it is, can we also, you know, get good pictures and sure. Sure, high school orientation is Facebook post. High school orientation is on September second, according to Ms. Todd. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's you know so so the um, hold on. Chris is looking at the second. Wow. See, that's right, great. So as long as he can from one Yeah. So it, it's it's it right. Exactly. It will be one of those first two days, and that is that's you know. So, so the point I think I think the bigger point is we're trying to get a time right. to have the kids in prior to the first day of school to alleviate any of that you know transitionary stress that everybody might be feeling there. All right. Perfect. More so for the parents than the kids. Yes, appreciate it. Yeah. Any other old business uh, from the board? Sorry, sorry. Did anybody? Just for your convenience. Oh, sorry, I saw you have it for me. Any new business from the board? Just from the comments over here on my computer. Can everybody please talk into the mic and talk up during the regular meeting? Yes. Why Thank we you. need lavalier mic? <laughs> one one item. So in um, June of 2019, we approved a <laughs> comprehensive equity plan. And uh, being the point of all these policy things, people were asking me about when that might be looked at again and what that rhythm is. So if you could just, you don't, first of all, it's not a pop quiz. So you, you don't have to, you don't have to answer. Well, you know, right now. Hot shots, that's <laughs> yeah, so, fine. Yeah, so, so at some point, if you could yeah, just no, tell the, us when that. Yeah, the comprehensive equity plan is looked at every three years. Yeah. So it, next year, I think the current one runs through 22. It runs through 19 22, through 22. Right. right. So the next one will probably be due at the end of this school year that will go 22 to 20. Right. And I guess the question was, when does that start getting worked on? Is that in like yeah probably yeah January or something like yeah that. we work you know probably yeah probably at the second i mean this year is going to be a few sec year for us that's so that's going to be uh you know that's going to be a primary focus for the for the first part of the year usually by you know after the first okay um that's that's typically when that would great would thanks yeah any other new business are we are we putting anything on the agenda regarding um uh change to public comment policies and board members at meetings. Are we putting a date on that? I thought we said we were going to speak about it next at the August 10th meeting. Oh. Yeah, next workshop. Yeah, the next workshop. Yeah, the next, workshop. Work, next like real workshop. Yeah. OK. I think we said we'd talk about August 10th. Great. Ken, you have that on your running list, right, from last time? Yeah, and that was public I thought comment. Was I'm sorry. Was just the whole board meeting format. Just the whole, OK, yeah. yes. Like mini, All right, at this time, <clears throat> is, there's no other new business from the board. Um, at this time, uh, as this is a newly 
newly formatted to the old format workshop. There's one public comment session during the um, workshop meeting, so that could be on any item at this time if there's any public comment. First, I'll extend that to our in-person attendee, and then we'll go to those who are participating um, from home. Um, just as a reminder, state your name and your address. Please. Well, and I'm sorry. And there's but at the you'll have to go to the microphone so for people online to here. hear you. Yes. yes, please. Thank you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. Uh, Carol Alto, 1803 Pitney. Um, I just have two things that I wanted to bring up and that I would hope you guys can maybe discuss as a board with the administration in whatever purview you discuss things to change policy. Um, the first item is, I would love for you to consider the implementation of an optional study hall at the high school for varsity athletes. Um, being a varsity athlete is an enormous time commitment. And I know, because I have two of them, um, especially multi-sport varsity athletes like my daughter who play all year, starting now, she's already started for the fall, um, sometimes hours a day, six days a week. It's a huge commitment, way more than any clubs or activities besides perhaps maybe the play or the band. Um, huge commitment and what happens is these kids go and play their sport and then they come home to reams of homework. And I'm talking about high school kids, so much homework. Um, it's, it's very hard to get it all done. And so what a great idea to give academic support to our athletes who, by the way, don't need a phys ed class. They're playing two and a half hours of sports a day intense sports. I would actually argue that it's bad for them to be in gym class. Think about it. You're going to an interscholastic competition representing your school, right? In a really high impact sport like lacrosse, like basketball, and you're going to go ride your a bike for 80 minutes an hour before that. Does that seem like a good idea? When that time could be spent, and I don't mean some like bureaucratic, you know, let's write a policy and let's schedule in the schedule. How about like, could we let them go to the library and do work or underutilized library? You know, when the kids are little, they have library class. They don't have that in high school. Why can't they do that instead of riding a bike or playing tennis for 80 minutes? I remember when we were as a district considering block scheduling, I went to all of those meetings. I don't think anybody ever brought it up, but as a parent of multi-sport varsity athletes, I'm telling you, it is nearly impossible to get it all done. So why not use that time for, for the academic support? Just go to the library, simple. They don't need supervision. You guys are always telling us, as parents, they're in high school, they're mature, don't you know, do this for them, let them look this up. Let them go to the library. Please discuss this as a board, as, it, as something that could maybe you know, really help provide academic support and you know, help them also overuse injuries, all of these things that come from way too much physical exercise. When my daughter played uh, ninth grade, she played varsity and JV basketball. She was getting home a lot of nights at seven o'clock and it was six days a week. Um, so what better way to support them but to kind of switch that time up. So that was my first item. My second one, some of you who have been here a long time, Amy, Denise, Jim, have heard me say this probably three or four times this summer homework. Can we just be done with it? Can we just take it out of the district. It is, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand the purpose of it. I don't think you guys understand the time involved in the summer homework. It, it, I, I just, I want my kid to be a kid and all year 
from September to June, my kids work hard. They're athletes, they're students, they take hard classes. And in the summer, we want them to be kids. As parents, we want them to work. Both of my kids, full-time jobs every summer from the age of 15 on. Why should they come home and do summer work? It's insane. They get pretty much nothing out of it. And if mine are probably getting none, nothing out of it, others are too. The parents hate it. The teachers hate it. The students hate it. I just do not understand the purpose that it serves. I understand what you guys think it serves, but there's another side to that. And I wish we could just get rid of it. Um, here's an example, math. My daughter just finished honors algebra two. So now she's doing her homework for honors pre-calc. Some of the problems in that packet are really long. It's pre-calc, right? It's not easy. It might take up a page for a problem. How many problems do you think are in that assignment? 10? I can tell you 20? it's probably 60 something. It's 80. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this. She started it in June because, like I said, she works full time. She plays travel sports. She tries to do some community service. We would love for her to be able to fit an SAT class in there somewhere, but she can't with all of the work you guys are giving her. So to do these 80 problems, she started in June. It's now July. There's a few of them she can't do. I will tell you, she goes on YouTube to learn how to do them. Some of them, she never learned. And she got the award for highest GPA in honors algebra two. So if she doesn't know them, nobody knows them. So she goes on YouTube and does all this, and there's a few of them she can't figure out. There's no academic support for summer work, period. None. There's not a teacher available. There's no, let's, on Fridays, there's office hours. There's nothing. These kids are left completely on their own. So the good foot soldiers they are, they march on and they try to get all of this done when all they want to do is be kids and all we want them to do is be kids. But no, they're doing all this, they soldier on. Then they go to school and within the first few days, they have a test on the homework that was not supported by the district in any way. It was given to kids to do independently. And now they have a test on it. That is outrageous. It's outrageous. Your grades in school should be based on what the teacher teaches you and how well you understood it. It's really that simple. Last year, my son took his math test of pre-calc, advanced pre-calc. The year before, he was robbed of math because his teacher went on a medical leave and they couldn't find a substitute. So he had packets with no answer key, by the way. He had packets. The kids just toiled away all day. Jim, you and I discussed this, like this happened. Okay, fine. People get sick. It's hard to get subs. I get it. Now he works so hard on the summer packet. We're hiring tutors. We're doing, this is insane. All this insane stuff. Guess what he gets on the test? 74. So now my son in NHS, great student, hard worker, spends the rest of the marking period trying to climb out of this place because of summer homework. It's insane. It doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever. And, and I, I, I'm, I've been here, this is, like I said, probably the third, fourth, fifth, I don't know how many times I've brought this up with you guys. The AP classes, it's in, the amount of work in those summer packets is insane. And here's the thing with the AP classes that I'm finding out with my daughter. They've never been exposed to it before. So now my daughter is taking AP physics, AP statistics. Guess what? This is novel to her. She's never had it before. She's a go-getter. She's adventurous. She wants to try it, but she's never had it before. So now she's self-learning all summer, very difficult, hard, thick packets, and she's going to get a test on it. What is the point of that? I, I, I'm asking you really, what is the point of yeah. that? Okay. Can, I, can I address yes. some of that? If my act? 
You may. may. Thank you. So you and I have discussed this issue, and and I share a lot of your your feelings on it. And and um, so first, let me say uh, that in math, uh, it's my understanding that at least for many of the classes, there will no longer be a test at the beginning of the year that's associated with the summer work. Okay, but let me ask you, when you say it's your understanding, it's not I don't a know that all of the classes won't have, like some of the AP classes, I'd have to double check it, but for the majority of the classes, um, the students still have to do the work and they will be given um, a, a, a completion of work assessment, a, a grade basically, like did they do it? Did they attempt to do it? Did they give it an honest attempt to do the work? Okay. Uh, and the answer keys are online as well. Which is great. Right? Which that part is, is, is helpful. Also, yes. too, I do want to mention that the teachers, overwhelmingly, if you email them, and you're right, there aren't office hours, but if, the t if you email the teachers in the summer, many of the teachers will get back to the kids and answer but, questions. But that's not accurate. I, I understand not that that's teaching. not something that- That's not that, teaching. Yeah. I, I understand that. I'm, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying that our teachers will very often do that in, in their, on their own time. The summer is, is their time. Um, so I, there, there have been changes that we have been working on to summer work based on the, honestly, based on Misato. Many experiences that have, that have occurred. For example, in many of the English classes, it's really now an optional thing. But not uh, in the higher level classes. Correct. And that is another well, thing that irks but, me. But part of the issue with AP, if I, you know, if I can just address AP first, a lot of the kids who take AP, we, schools in, in, in the Northeast are, are at a disadvantage, not just New Jersey, uh, because the tests are when the tests are in May, Many schools are starting as early as August 1st. So many school districts around the country have a jump start on instruction and they're taking the test. They don't take the test a month yeah, earlier. I, I understand they have a full that. Month. Yeah. So for a lot of our teachers, because we don't start until September, uh, it's very difficult to get through all of the material from September to May. And so there really is a need for the kids. And I know, I know that the AP teachers will conduct forums with the kids in the summer and, and will do um, some of that. You might want to double check that because there's some AP teachers who haven't even posted their assignments and said that they will not post their assignments until the end of the summer. So that one I find hard to believe. And that has certainly well, not been my experience that the AP teachers ever offered a, a learning forum during the summer for the class. Okay, well, I mean, I'm not gonna say that's across yeah. the board, but I know that we have some that have yeah. definitely done okay. that, right? I mean, it might depend on the class and depend on the teacher, right? But, but that's so, concerning, it's concerning that there's no predictability or uniformity to it then. It's a little bit of the luck of the Well, it's, it's, up, it, we've, we've, it's really been at the autonomy of, of the teacher and what they feel has right. been, you know, their, their, what they need to have their students do. It depends, it has depended sometimes on, on the class. Some, some, some teachers, have a summer assignment, some, some do not. Um, but Jim, they don't yeah. even get their schedules until yeah. mid to late August. So now, again, my daughter, full-time job, yeah. all, all the things that summer should be. Um, and then she's, she has- Caroline, I, if, I, if I can, I'm sorry, if I, if I can just, yeah. I know kids, I know kids <laughs> who have done summer assignments and then had to, switch out of the class yeah exactly uh, or, so, or they you know, don't even know what it, they're it, taking it, till their right. schedule comes it out is, so it's supposed it to be is. a summer assignment well and but now they, it's like no, for the most part though if they if, if they get if they request an ap class they they typically get it but i but so, I, I know in my situation no she's she requested four right. ap classes she'll get three we don't know which three what i would suggest though carol like i think to come and speak about the global picture here is is 100 i mean to talk about some of the specifics you're talking about, talk talk to Mrs. Kasuba, you know, and she can she can work through some of those things with you know with what you're talking about. I, I want to. We have spent a lot of time over the last so many years talking about summer assignments. After last year's summer time, because we have done the analysis, and you're absolutely right, particularly with math, that we have done the analysis, and and it and it shows that traditionally, the kids um, take that beginning test. And on average, some kids do very well. Some, some kids do very poorly, 
very poorly, 30s and 40s. Yeah. And they're starting their year in a very significant hole. And so uh, last year we spent a lot of time talking about this and, um, and I, and it led to, to that change where, you know, I've been told by the supervisor that no longer will, will a test be given. In, in well, first of all, that's very great to hear that you guys are talking about this because this has been something that's come up over the years. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. And if what you're saying is true, that they take a test an assessment and that maybe can point the teacher in the direction of like, yeah, oh I my mean, God. Diagnostic have, to let the teachers know where the great. kids are that's makes fantastic. a lot of sense, right? That makes a lot a, of sense. A, a, a graded test that a kid starts a year with a 52 or whatever it may be does not seems to be uh, counterproductive. It's punitive. To what's going on. And that's what and that's what I'm here to say. I, I don't I, like the summer work. I don't yeah. I understand the conundrum with AP. <laughs> Well, but there's you know, also, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, particularly in this year about learning loss and summer slides and all those things. You know, obviously what we try to accomplish with English uh, language arts is just to keep the kids reading mm -hmm. and to get, and, you know, and, and, and have them read and have them engage in, and like, for example, in English this year, it's read a book of your choice, read it, you know, just read. But, and, and, and so these, this is more of what we want to do. We want to try to foster that more than make it about a grade. But here's about, what's not fair. And I brought it to, to, because you're right. It says, this is, if you're in regular or advanced, which is most kids, right. it says, this summer, all students entering blah, 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 regular grades nine through 12 will read a book of their choice. Um, while choosing and reading the book are required, become ready to, to discuss it, mm -hmm. but nothing will be handed in. And if it is, it's for extra credit. Right. But honors classes, required reading, huge required packet. What's the difference? Why should honors kids be punished for that? That makes zero sense. They're the ones probably least likely to be affected by the summer slide, quite frankly. So the, the kids on levels one and two, or I don't know if I'm getting this right, the, the lower two levels don't have a requirement and the higher level does. Well, they do have a requirement, it's just different. But if we wanna be intellectually honest, it says, it's the, it says on your, on, in, in the honor system, read a well, book. Well, they're gonna to have to talk about their books and what they do. Okay. I, mean, Kathy, I mean, look, you sign up for an AP class, there's, it's a college level It's class. not AP, it's honors. Well, the honors classes are weighted the same as AP. They're seen, they're seen as preparatory for AP classes. So it, but there is a little bit of different expectation. But that being said, you know, I, 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 I agree 100%. We all agree 100% that summer work for the sake of summer work is not what we want to be doing, right? So we want to be doing things that will help prepare the kids in order to be successful for the classes. And, and I, I, I think it's been a work in progress. I think we've made, if you look at summer work five, six years ago, I think you see we've made a lot of adjustments to try to make the work more meaningful and more, uh, more relevant for kids so that it's, it is something. Another issue is that not all, and that we've talked about, is that not all the kids have the classes in September at the high school level, for example. Yeah. So it's you have method. kids who have to do all that work when they're taking final exams for their first semester classes, because realistically, kids who don't start a class until February are not probably going to do it in the summer. They're going to right. wait and they're going to do it in January, right. you know, or over winter break or whatever it may be. So there are a lot of issues that we constantly, I want, you know, the point I'm trying to make is we are constantly talking about these things. And, you know, when we, when we do this, we, we listen to parents like yourself. We engage with those parents. We also engage with our teachers, right? Because some of these things are very long standing norms that need to be adjusted. And sometimes those are some of the toughest things to adjust the longer they've been in place. So, you know, I think we've been making progress in this regard, but there's still progress that needs to be made. You know, it's an ongoing process, but we work to engage our parents in this, in this, in getting feedback. And we also work to engage with our staff because, you know, obviously we want our staff to feel, because just like with anything, we have staff members who might feel exactly the way you feel. Oh, Some many of them is, do. Know, and then there's others that are, you know, no, we need to have these kids do this. We need this. And we this. Yeah. So we really try to balance out between all of these groups. So the supervisors meet with the staff members to work on these things. 
So, you know, I think a lot of these questions would not, you know, I mean, unless, unless we're at a place where we as a, a district, as a board, want to say there is no summer work. That's the place you know, I would like to get right? to. Right. If we're at that place, but otherwise, you know, the, the, how we deal with this, you know, Someone dealing with this through too. the supervisors <laughs> and through, through the building level. And I mean, it has been an ongoing conversation. I mean, I can tell you. I mean, and, I, and I've seen the changes. The changes are good. I'm yeah. telling you for a fact, the changes have not reached the higher level classes and they should. I mean, it's been a long time, but I did get my master's in gifted and talented education and I don't remember much. But the one thing that was inculcated into us was just because somebody is more academically inclined doesn't mean they should get more work. No, it's not it more means work. they it's, should get different work. Yeah. Look at the right. work, go Agreed. on the website and look at the volume. Uh -huh. And Agreed. undoubtedly, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I'll, I'll stop now. I would like to please take a look. Some of the countries in the world with the greatest educational <laughs> systems have a pedagogical belief in let's let kids be kids. Trust me as a parent, when I tell you, I know what's best for my kids, for them to have a job and be in the world and make money and learn how to manage their money, for them to be able to get away from all this craziness and go play with their friends and go to the beach, for them to maybe pick up an SAT book once in a while. I'm a parent, I know what's best for them. That's what I'd make them do. All of this stuff, I wouldn't have them touch it if I, if I had my way. So, thank you. Thank we you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have you considered um, applying Ms. Conway, <laughs> to our uh, Ms. Conway, I speak to the ceiling. Is there anyone in the queue from home for public comment? No, there is not. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. So at this time, we'll make a motion to adjourn uh, the workshop meeting and then we'll reconvene in the regular meeting. Motion? Second. Motion.